male reproductive system the male reproductive system is located in the pelvic region it consists of a pair of testes accessory ducts accessory glands and external genitalia testes are the primary sex organ of male and suspended in the scrotal sacs scrotum is a pouch of pigmented skin arising from the lower abdominal wall and hanging between the legs it is divided internally to right and left scrotal sacs by a muscular partition called septum scroti this is externally marked by a median ridge called raphe in a fetus the testes originate in the abdominal cavity just below the kidneys but later during the 7th month of development it descends permanently to the scrotal sacs through a passage named inguinal canal each testes is oval in shape and in adults it is 4 to 5 cm long and 2 to 3 cm wide testes is enclosed in a dense fibrous coat tunica albuginea inward growth of which divide the testes into around 2 to 300 lobules called testicular lobules each lobules consist of 1 to 3 highly coiled seminiferous tubules these tubules are lined inside by germinal epithelium germinal epithelium consists of two type of cells cuboidal cells called spermatogonia and pyramidal cells called sertoli cells or nurse cells spermatogonia or the sperm mother cells produce sperms sertoli cells aid in the process of spermatogenesis by providing nutrition to the developing sperms the interstitial spaces between the semifernous tubules contain small groups of large polygonal cells termed leydig cells or interstitial cells they secrete male hormones called androgens especially testosterone testosterones are concerned with the regulation of the activities of male reproductive organs and secondary sexual characteristics that is facial hair pubic hair adam's apple etc accessory ducts of the male reproductive system include rete testis vasa efferentia epididymis and vas deferens the seminiferous tubules unite to form a network of tubules called the rete testis it connects all seminiferous tubules with another set of tubules named vasa efferentia vasa efferentia are 15 to 20 in number and are connected with the epididymis they form the initial part of the epididymis at some locations they bear cilia to help in sperm transport epididymis is a tightly coiled tube about 6 meter located on the posterior margin of each testis the epididymis stores sperm temporarily it has three regions the anterior caput the middle corpus and the posterior cauda cauda epididymis is connected with the scrotal sac by a cord known as gubernaculum epididymis leads to vas deferens or vasa deferentia it starts from cauda epididymis ascends to the abdomen through inguinal canal and passes over the urinary bladder vas deferens receives a duct from the seminal vesicle and forms a common duct the ejaculatory duct which finally opens at urethra seminal vesicles are paired and elongated glands at the lower part of the urinary bladder that opens to vas deferens they secrete seminal fluid which contains fructose prostaglandins and various enzymes it is slightly alkaline and constitutes about 70% of the semen the prostate gland is a chestnut shaped gland which lies at the base of the urinary bladder it surrounds the first part of the urethra the secretion of the prostate gland the prostatic fluid is slightly acidic due to the presence of citric acid which helps in sperm motility this secretion is also collected by vas deferens along with the sperms and is discharged to the urethra corpus glands or bulb urethral glands are pea sized glands lying at the base of the penis and open directly to the urethra its alkaline secretion acts as a lubricant for penis and also neutralizes the acidity of any urine traces left in the urethra this secretion is produced during sexual excitation secretions of all these glands are collectively called seminal plasma sperms along with seminal plasma constitute semen
Average volume of semen in an ejaculation is 2.5 to 5 milliliter. In males, urine and semen pass through urethra. External genitalia Penis The penis is the copulatory organ of man. It is a cylindrical organ suspended in the front of the scrotum. The interior of the penis is formed of three cylindrical cords of erectile spongy tissues. Two of these cords are called corpora cavernosa and are thicker and located on the right and left sides of the penis. The third cord, corpus spongiosum, encloses the urethra. These tissues are rich in blood sinuses but are normally not filled with blood. During sexual excitement, arterial blood rushes to these tissues and causes erection of the penis. Corpus spongiosum is expanded to form a highly sensitive conical structure near the tip of the penis termed glans penis. This is covered by a retractable fold of skin, the prepuce or foreskin. Urethra extends through the penis and opens out through an opening called urethral meatus. Spermatogenesis The formation of male gamete or sperm is called spermatogenesis. It is initiated in the testes with the beginning of puberty. Production of spermatozoa or sperms takes place in the seminiferous tubules of the testes. Spermatogenesis completes in three phases. The process begins with the multiplication of spermatogonia. Each spermatogonia again divides into two diploid primary spermatocytes. The next is growth phase, in which each diploid primary spermatocytes enlarges and prepares for meiotic division. The third phase is maturation phase, where each diploid primary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis. This consists of two divisions. During the first meiotic division, each diploid primary spermatocyte produces two haploid secondary spermatocytes. The second meiotic division is an equational division. Each secondary spermatocyte produces two haploid spermatids. As a result, four equal size spermatids are formed from two secondary spermatocytes. The non-motile spermatids remain connected to each other by their cytoplasm. These spermatids are then transformed into motile spermatozoas or sperms. Transformation of spermatids to spermatozoa, sperms, is termed as spermiogenesis. After spermiogenesis, sperm heads are embedded in the Sertoli cells. Later, they detach and reach the lumen of seminiferous tubules by a process called spermiation. Female Reproductive System the female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries, a pair of oviducts, fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina, external genitalia and a pair of mammary glands. Ovaries are the primary sex organ of a female. They are solid structures located in the lower part of the abdomen. It is connected by ligaments to the uterus and lateral pelvic wall. Each ovary is 2 to 4 cm long and 2 cm wide. It is composed of connective tissue called stroma covered by a layer of germinal epithelium. Stroma has an outer cortex and an inner medulla. The ovarium cortex contains some rounded bodies named follicles at various stages of development. Each follicle contains an ovum. Fallopian tubes or oviducts are narrow tubes about 10 to 12 cm long, connecting the ovary to the uterus. Each oviduct is differentiated into three parts, infundibulum, ampulla and isthmus. Infundibulum is the funnel-shaped proximal part and has finger-like projections called fimbrae at its margin. Fimbrae are very close to the ovaries and receive the egg release from the ovaries. Ampulla is the wider part of the oviduct next to infundibulum. It is lined by ciliated epithelium. 
Isthmus is the short, narrow and straight part that follows the ampulla and connects with the uterus. Uterus is a hollow, muscular and inverted pear-shaped structure. It is also known as the womb. It is located in the pelvic cavity between the urinary bladder and the rectum. The uterus is attached to the body wall by a double fold of peritoneum called mesometrium. It has an upper dome-shaped part, fundus, middle large part, corpus, and a narrow part, cervix, that projects into the vagina. Implantation of embryo occurs in the uterine fundus. It is the site of fetal growth during pregnancy. The cervix is composed of powerful sphincter muscles. It is strong enough to hold the weight of the fetus and amniotic fluid against the pull of gravity during pregnancy. The cavity of the cervix is called the cervical canal. The uterus has a thick wall made of three tissues, an outer peritoneal covering called perimetrium, a middle layer of smooth muscles, myometrium, and an inner glandular layer, endometrium. The myometrium is involved in uterine contractions. The endometrium undergoes cyclic changes during the menstrual cycle. Vagina is an elastic muscular tube, about 7.5 meter long, that connects the cervix of the uterus to the exterior of the body by the vaginal opening. The cervical canal along with vagina forms the birth canal. During menstruation, the menstrual flow exits the body via the vagina. Vulva is the collective name of female external genitalia located in the pubic region of the body. It includes vestibule, mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris, and hymen. Vestibules is a small depression in front of the anus into which the urethra and vagina open separately. Mons pubis is a cushion of fatty tissue on either side of the vestibule covered by skin and pubic hair. The labia majora is the interior portion of the mons pubis which is split into right and left halves. It is homologous of the scrotum. The labia minora are a pair of hairless fleshy folds of tissue inner to the labia majora that surrounds the vaginal opening. The clitoris is a small solid erectile organ that lies at the anterior junction of labia minora. This is homologous to the penis. The vaginal opening is covered partially by a membrane called hymen. A slit in the hymen allows menstrual flow to pass out of the vagina. A birth of Bartholin's gland is seen on each side of the vaginal opening. Their ducts open just outside the hymen. During sexual excitement, these glands produce a viscous fluid that serves as a lubricant during copulation. Mammary glands Mammary glands are a part of external organs of the female. They are commonly called as breasts. The main function of mammary gland is secretion of milk to nurture baby. These are modified sweat glands and remain undeveloped till puberty. At puberty, they start developing under the influence of estrogen and progesterone hormones. The external surface of each breast has a projection called the nipple. Each nipple is surrounded by a circular pigmented area called the areola. Internally, the breasts consist of glandular tissue forming mammary glands, fibrous tissue and fatty or adipose tissue. In each breast, the mammary glands are divided into about 15 to 20 compartments called mammary lobes. Each lobe is made up of a number of lobules. Each lobule is composed of grape-like clusters of milk-secreting glands termed alveoli. When a baby sucks the nipple, milk is produced in the alveoli. Milk passes from the alveoli into the mammary tubules and then into the mammary duct. Several mammary ducts join to form a wider part, the mammary ampulla, lactiferous sinuses, where milk may be stored before going to the lactiferous ducts. 
each lactiferous duct carries milk to the nipple. The ejection of milk is stimulated by the hormone oxytocin. A nursing woman can secrete 1 to 2 liters of milk per day. Oogenesis The process of formation of a mature female gamete, the ovum, is called oogenesis. This process is initiated during the embryonic development stage. Oogenesis consists of three phases. Multiplication phase, growth phase and maturation phase. During multiplication phase, the cells of germinal epithelium of fetal ovary undergo mitotic division producing undifferentiated diploid cells called oogonia, gamete mother cells. Some of these cells grow and becomes the primary oocyte which is diploid. Meiosis begins in the primary oocytes soon after their formation, but the division process gets arrested and oocyte remains in the meiotic prophase 1 stage. Each primary oocyte then gets surrounded by a layer of granulosa cells, which are derived from the germinal epithelium lining the ovary. The structure thus formed is called the primary follicle. With the onset of puberty, the primary oocyte becomes larger in size. More layers of granulosa cells surround the primary follicle and a layer or theca is formed around it. Such a structure is called secondary follicle. Each secondary follicle then develops a fluid-filled cavity termed antrum inside it. The theca around the diploid primary oocyte divides into inner theca and outer theca. Thus a secondary follicle transforms into a tertiary follicle. The fully grown primary oocyte inside the tertiary follicle completes its first meiotic division and produces two haploid daughter cells. The larger cell is known as the secondary oocyte or ovum. The other cell is extremely small and called as the first polar body. Both the cells have haploid number of chromosomes. The secondary oocyte develops a membrane, zona pellucida, around it. Thus, the tertiary follicle becomes a mature graphene follicle. The graphene follicle ruptures and releases the secondary oocyte or ovum by a process called ovulation. The second meiotic division of the secondary oocyte or ovum occurs only at the time of fertilization in the fallopian tube of the female. During fertilization, the secondary oocyte unequally divides its cytoplasm which results in production of a large haploid cell, the ooted with a large quantity of cytoplasm and a very small haploid cell, the second polar body. At the same time, the first polar body also divides into two polar bodies. Thus, a primary oocyte forms one haploid ooted and three haploid polar bodies.